This is the Recruitment Roller Coaster podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz, and today I'm in uh, Waterloo. I'm in uh, wait, the, wait. <laughs> the very core offices um, of Salt, and I'm with Emma Lohman, who is uh, the business development manager for Salt, uncovering the UK and the US. Hello, recruitment world. Hello, recruitment world. Hello. Yes, this is the recruitment. This is the centre <laughs> of the recruitment world. This really is. <laughs> no, um, look, Emma, thank you so much for uh, joining me. I know we've it's, we've sort of gone back and forth a little bit, haven't we, to get to get this booked in? Yeah. But we've got it booked in. We're here. We're ready to go. And I'm excited to I'm uh, excited. uncover the the Emma Lohman power within. <laughs> the power within, yeah. <laughs> so where I always like to start, as I was uh, uh, telling you beforehand. How the hell did you get into recruitment? Well, you know, like all recruiters, I think, you know, I came out the womb and I was like, I want to be a recruiter, (laughs) mum. Do you know you're like the fourth person that's done that? Oh my God. (laughs) That wasn't original, mate. That wasn't original, mate. I'm so basic. Um, no, so I, look, I'm not going to big myself up, but I'm quite intelligent and, you know, I'm... Did really well at school, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Didn't necessarily... I bet everyone Did you said go to uni? that. Everyone said this, haven't they? No, no, no I no. didn't go to uni. Okay. No. So I, I, thought, I thought you were smart. I am, but I didn't know... I, I you think, didn't know what you wanted to do? I didn't do. know what I wanted okay. to do. Got good grades and basically just thought, you know, I need money. Yeah. So I became a debt collector. Okay. So what, you wanted to take other people's money? <laughs> so I thought, how can I get money? I'll just take, take it off people. <laughs> no, so it was literally the worst job in the world. It was a call centre, yeah. debt collection. You'd sit there with a um, headset. headset, have like things popping up, and you'd have to basically ask people to pay debts that they've been avoiding for like six months. I'm sure there's a lot of recruiters and, and out did, there that know those calls. Was it like, was it li- like you had to like literally force them to pay it on the phone? Not like, force them to pay. Like, like, it's all about like being nice to people. Oh, like really? You have to, you know, help, you have to suggest that they pay. But... To be honest, it was, I think I did it for about two years from when I was 17 to 19. Yeah. And it was like the best, in a way, like recruitment training that I could have done because, not that they were training me anything about recruitment, but it was basically me selling, you know, trying to get people to do something they didn't want to do, which not that we do that in recruitment, but, you know, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a great grounding. It was a great grounding. And then from that, I decided I don't want to be a debt collector my whole life. What shall I do? Um, I got a job at a really small exec search firm who worked in software sales. Okay. So it was. So did you know about recruitment at this point? Like, what was your perception? Didn't know of recruitment? anything about recruitment. I think coming out of like college and not having a degree or anything like that, I knew I wanted to have a career in something, but I didn't know what I wanted that career to be. Mm. Um, and just thought, oh, you know, recruitment looks quite good. Um, but I didn't actually get a job as a recruiter. So okay. it was a really small company, and I basically was going to be doing admin there. Oh, really? ha- and you thought you was doing... No, I knew I was doing admin. Oh, right, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with admin. No, nah, definitely not. No, so I, I went in, and the reason is their resources... Um, it was a really, really small company. Like, I'm talking four people. Yeah, I joined the company of eight, so... Yeah, so okay. they only hired people with degrees, and I didn't have a degree. Oh, wow. So I so went I went straight to admin. Oh, I, was, I went to the <laughs> wonderful world of admin. No, so what were you doing for them? Like just supporting them on like I was doing like the researching side, oh, like okay. not actually speaking to people. So like so doing LinkedIn searches. That kind of stuff. That. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um and then people kept coming into this is, you know, meeting candidates face to face. They'd come into our office, we'd sit down, we'd interview them, and I'd be like, Hi, do you want a cup of coffee? Do you want a cup of tea? And then about after a couple of months of doing that, the director said, actually, you know, even though you have a degree, you know, you're not a retard. Why don't you actually get on the phone? And I was like, yes, guys. Okay. Um, So then how long did you do that for? So I was there for two years. Okay. And um, I was still basically resourcing. So it was basically... So it's just a candidate-focused role. Yeah, so they would pick up jobs in software sales, and this was, like, super old school. This is, like, before LinkedIn Recruiter. Really? We used to have to call people... How old are you? 28. Okay. I've had a lot of Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of Botox. Okay. Not a lot, just enough. Okay, go on. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> this was... We didn't Before have... Before Linton recruit, so what, how are they pulling jobs? Just like cold call? So they had a... They were like quite old. They've been doing it for like 20 years. Okay. They had a really good network. They were, We were working with like IBM, HP, like okay. big software companies working yeah. senior level hires. And it was really like traditional market mapping. So I'd have to go on LinkedIn, look at everyone who, you know, their competitors, yeah. put them in an Excel spreadsheet, call them at work, call them at their desk, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, and it was really, really hard. Like, we used to have to stand up in front of the directors. I'm sure they're not listening, but if they are, I'm sure they won't mind. It was great, guys. It was an amazing <laughs> learning curve for me. Yeah. But it was really tough because, you know, we had to know everything about these big companies. And also, they weren't, wouldn't settle for, like, you know, you couldn't go on a job board. They wanted the best of the best. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, you had to stand up and do what? Like, just do cold calls and that? No, we had to stand up and recite. Like, if we were going to pitch a company, we'd have to stand up and talk about... The share price, the growth, the really? revenue. So all like no, nail down like now everything, bit. otherwise we wouldn't be allowed to talk to people. Mad. And I used to go and cry in the toilet and then I'd come back and do it. So wait, so wait, 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 wait. Just, just quickly on that point. Yeah. Just, just out of interest. Like, what was the sales pitch, if you get what I mean? So like, the so sales what, what, pitch what would be... what was they focusing on? So say we've got... So say we're called... So IBM yeah. used to have a portal where you could basically type in any employee and it would come up with their work mobile number. Wow. So they don't, I don't think they have that anymore. But so say I'm trying to get hold of someone at IBM as a sales guy and I'm recruiting for X company. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You had access... That to a, to it, a portal. It's a pu- it's a public thing. It was their phone. It was and the then mobile I- was on there. Yeah, because it was their work. Fu- it was their work mobile. Mad. All right. Okay, that was okay. a thing. All right. Okay. Like, cool. It probably still is a thing now. Okay. Like, fair. It's not used for recruitment. It's used for like. It's like just a sick it's directory. It's just like a thing. Yeah. It's okay. Like a okay. Okay. Directory. Cool. So All right. Cool. So I had to call up a recruiter. No, yeah, sorry, you'd have to call, I'd call up a sales guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to be like, "Hi, Mr. John Smith. How are you? Um, it's Emma Loman calling from Orem. They were called. Yeah. Shout out. Um, and I'd have to be like, look, have you got five minutes? Um, I know you're probably not looking for a new job, but I've been specifically um, told to approach you about this role, blah, 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 blah. And they don't, you know, usually tell you to get lost or they go, okay, fine, who is it? And because you're in that situation, you're talking to people that are earning a lot of money, you'd have to go, well, they're this company, they do this, 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 this. They go, you know... Yeah. You, they they basically drill you, so you'd have to know all this stuff, like. Yeah, but what? Just out of interest, that that okay, yeah. definitely sounds. That difficult. makes sense. Yeah, oh. that, that, that that makes sense. But all all I was just interested in, because I'm thinking, okay, it would just be interested to actually understand like what these really experienced recruiters yeah. decided to include in that sales pitch. You got what I mean? So yeah, yeah, of course. You said share share so, price. Well, no. So typically, it would be. Um, like their growth over the last sort of three years in terms of their finances. So they've grown by 104% year on year. Um, Specifically what the product did, whether they were a market leader, if they'd been in like like Gartner's Magic Quadrant. I don't know if you know those guys. They're like an analyst report. Okay. If they've featured any of that. Yeah. You know, you can like Google stuff about companies it comes up with, whatever. So anything like that sort of highlights about them to try and make them say they'd actually have a conversation with you. Okay, cool. Fair enough. No, I was was just interested. Mm. So how long did you do that for? Two years? Like Two years. Like on the phone? Yeah. Like 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 cool cool times monitors. Like headhunting people. Cool times monitors. Who does that now? Straight headhunting people. Yeah. Was you winning clients at this point? No. Really? I never did any. I never won any clients. Really? Okay. Um, so, they, so they bring in the jobs. They bring and in the jobs. And then they help you map out, or you yeah. map out. Yeah. And they'd be like, we'd, let's we'd go. put like say thirty people on a list that would get that that w- could get that job, and then we would have to speak to every single person on that list, and we couldn't rest until every single person had been spoken to. What was to. the most common objection you got? Just some people weren't looking at, you know, in sales, if they're really, really doing well and they're hitting their number and overachieving it leave? and they're going to earn like 500 grand, they're not going to leave. Yeah, why would they leave? But yeah. those are the people that you want. So it's kind of like some people could be swayed. Maybe they're going to get, mm. you know, whatever increase on their salary. But that's a lot of the time. Sometimes people are just like super happy and you can't force yeah, yeah, people yeah. not to be happy. That's mad. So that was your ground. That's Do like, that's like the, 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 the reason why I said that's mad yeah. is because. So what? So you'd call that as like headhunting? I don't know if I'd even call that headhunting. I feel like if you look at exec shirt firms or that's what they do. Yeah, I don't. They probably do it in a yeah, but in a more well, yeah. I guess they, I think a lot of companies will say they do exec search, but they just kind of fluff it up. We're all doing the same thing. We're all going yeah, after yeah, the same yeah. people, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just I, this, I, I again being honest, like I, I never did that. Mm. What like, did you recruit in though? Insurance, but like. I mean, I we never. I don't. I'm pretty sure no one in the office. Well, maybe one person every now and again would call someone at their desk. See, I like, do, I don't agree. I wouldn't agree with it now. Really? Like I'm totally. I I think now people have changed. The way we interact with people has sure. changed. So. I definitely wouldn't do it now. But then there was no option. Like you couldn't add people on LinkedIn. You had to enter their email address and that kind of yeah, stuff. Well, you got the IBM portal, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't need laughs> Everyone has the IBM <laughs> portal. It's a thing. It's a thing. Okay, okay. 
Mate, okay, so th- that's really interesting then. So how did you get on doing that then? Like, did you, bu- so did you I build did, well? No, so it was just on basically filling their roles. I didn't have a revenue Do you not target. get a commission? Yeah, we got like 200 quid. What, per placement? Pro- probably, I'm, I'm t- I was like 90, no, it must have been about 20, 20, no, it must have been, how old must I have been? 21 at this point. Yeah. So I can't really remember. Fez, but you, but it was like just more of like a it set It was probably fee. about 200 pounds, I think I per got placement. per placement. And it was actually the hardest recruitment I think I've ever done, yeah. which is the irony of so it all. So once you got them on the hook... Mm. Like, what's your involvement after that, just out of interest? Was you Still then managing everything. So, so I'd like, managed getting through the interviews yeah, and getting all that, through qualifying the interviews. them. Yeah, like, it was a really small company. It was literally four people. So it's not as if we had people to hand things over yeah, to or true, whatever. True. The di- uh, you know, I was really, really lucky to join that company because I've got, you know, trained from two directors that did that and yeah, they had nothing experience. else with their spare time except for train me and this other guy. So, you know, yeah, it was really difficult. But also, I think it taught me a lot of really good like grounding lessons of recruitment and i think when you join a big company you know no matter how hard companies try obviously we can't donate like give time to every single person and get them to be the way we kind of want it to be no totally right i think that's that's always so i used to cry every day but it was it was worth it (laughs) (laughs) okay on that point then before we move on two things what other sort of like you said that it was really good grounding was Mm. there anything else that really helped you with like if you look back now that like some really key you're really glad that that happened so you've obviously clearly got some from day one you've got some real solid experience just getting rejected yeah. and like getting on the phone yeah and all that i think so is there anything else just that good really processes you, you so you know for me it was very 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 process driven okay um so it's really organized from so quite really early organized on, i'm very very badly organized so it was very good for me to do that also i think you know the attitude of not giving up in terms of the fact that now we have way so like so many more candidates so much more to choose from but realistically we've still got to do a good job for our clients and they still want those top tier people so i think now it's quite easy to go well i've sent them a message they're not coming back to me um you know and then and then so they're not they're not interested whereas i'm definitely more about okay you may have sent them a message but what else have you done? Have what you actually spoken done, yeah. to them? Can you get them to go to a coffee with this guy? Like, that was the one thing it taught me. It was like, oh, such a cheesy saying. I absolutely hate it. But my old director used to say, we're not making marriages. We're just making a first date. And I, okay. like, oh, that is so cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> God. Um, but it's kind of true in a way. Like, you're not forcing people to go and take the job. You just want to get them to go and have that initial conversation. And yeah. I think if you do that, people get invested. So okay. I think that, that that was a good... So process is... Yeah. Not, okay, that, that's interesting. And then you, you just touched on it there, which was, which was my second point. As you said, crying a lot of the days. Yeah. Difficult. Yeah. Why didn't you quit? I didn't quit because I'm not a quitter. Um, no, but I, what helped you get through it? I think I knew that it was really good learning. Like okay. recruitment, you know, for me personally, and this is absolutely no disrespect, I don't want to come across in a bad way here, but I didn't want to go to one of like the bigger agencies, like a read or whatever. I thought to myself, I want to do stuff with bigger fees and I want to do stuff that's more like in a headhunting sort of approach. Okay. Um, so I knew it, I knew it was going to be really horrible and, uh, you know, no one wants to make those cold calls. What made you want, why, why, was, why? I don't know. I just thought, I just thought in my head, I think I'd seen maybe a like a film about headhunter or something in New York and I was like oh my god that's gonna be me <laughs> uh, <laughs> what like film that. was that mate no I'm joking it's just a dream I had no I'm joking um, okay. so I think I just want I, I knew that would actually get me really really good training so, you, so even though yeah it was really difficult mm. you had the sort of self-awareness or perspective to be like well actually like this yeah. is gonna help me become better exactly or whatever. and I and I and at the time as well they were gonna grow the company so were I they th- supportive because you had nowhere to hide. In looking back on it, and you know, both the directors were absolutely, like I said, they were amazing. But looking back on it, it probably was, I, I definitely felt out of my depth a lot of the time, yeah. but I don't think I really. But that enabled you like some yeah, serious growth. It's kind right? of like fight or flight. I was like, you've just got to kind of crack on with this and get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mate, um, fair play. That was like straight in that's yeah, like so sink or <laughs> swim, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so when I came here, it was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So, no. okay, so. Um, so we're there for two years. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. And um, then obviously you joined Salt. Mm-hmm. Um, who obvi- so how big were they when 
Uh, so you I joined Salt. So I got approached by a rec to rec and he sent me a message. And at this point, I'd been crying in the toilet, you know, more than regularly. So I thought, do you know what, Emma? Give Open. it a go. Yeah. Um, also, I live in Surrey. So this recruitment agency was in Surrey, okay. not in London. And I was like, bright lights, big city, you know, let's move yeah, it move to, to London, London yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so I said, yeah, okay, L- you know, went to the interview. And when I interviewed at Salt, I think there was like 35 people. Okay. So, oh, gosh, I think we've got 250 people now. Yeah, that's mad. So we just acquired another business like two weeks ago. Oh, wow, okay. Did you see it in the press? No, so no, we've... we've we, it's fine. <laughs> 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 I sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it was a completely different company Experience. in terms of the and yeah and in terms oh. of environment what were you expecting? well i remember i came in on my first day and they were like oh you know we've, there, there, there was jobs and you know i had uh, like james walsh who's the regional director in new okay. york was like is like one of these best managers i've ever had he was really supportive but he was like oh yeah like do you want the login details for the job board and i was like what what's the job board i don't mad. use job we still don't use job boards really but um, yeah, I just didn't know what job board was. That's didn't mad. know what a Boolean search was. So what, what made you join Salt out of interest? Um, in, got interviewed by Elliot, who was really, you know, had such an amazing vision, was really passionate about the company. Yeah. Um, it was, just had a really good culture. Like, we've been in this office since I joined. And yeah. I think it's just one of those places you just walk through the door and it's just got such a good energy and vibe yeah, about like it. Yeah, that, that's like no BS. Like, I, I did feel yeah. like... Yeah. It's, it's tr- like I've been to obviously quite a lot of offices and like it definitely has like a de- like cool yeah. energy about it and stuff. Yeah. Which, that's no BS. Yeah, that's I know. It, it, it's a bit cringy, but it's true. Um, <laughs> and I think I was, yeah, 22. And I think it was just a really good place to... Take your equipment to, to, to take, yeah, and, and I remember as well because they were like, you know, I just lied in the interview and said that I did my own VD, which I didn't. Really? Jokes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I've got all my own clients, had none. <laughs> uh, so it was just, you know, it was that kind of, you know, that sort of supportive environment. Yeah. And uh, the chairman, Paul, he's from where I live in Woking, Surrey, shout out. Okay. Uh, so it just felt very homely. Like there was a lot yeah. of Surrey people here and I was like, oh, yeah. perfect. Nice. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So just to set the scene, mm-hmm. been here for... Six, six and a half years. That's nearly, that's nearly a decade. I mate. know, I'm that's so old as well. So bad. Mate, you're not old. You are not old, mate, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so look, so it's six and a half years. Yeah. Just to just to frame it up, so during that period, you've got what talk to me just about the journey and t- well, as in like just job title and then so we'll break job it title. Down. So, so you joined as a consultant. Yeah. So that you was from day one, you're doing clients and candidates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So consultant, then senior consultant, then principal consultant, then senior principal consultant, okay. then practice lead, then business development manager. Okay. So so <laughs> so, so, so what you do now is it yeah. just beat like client? No. So. Um, I actually have a team okay. that report into me okay. in London, and there's people in New York that I give jobs to, but I don't manage them directly, so they've got their own manager. I think my job might change like in the next few months, I'm not entirely sure, but I might focus more on the management piece, but effectively... But right now, how many people do you manage? Um, I think four. Four, okay. And then how long, How for what period of your time here have you man- managed people? Has it only been in the last? No, I've managed, so I was a practice lead, I think got promoted to a practice lead about three years ago. And then that's when so you start managing. So effectively that's when you're like a team leader. You're not actually like, you then, you're not officially, like you don't have a P&L basically, but yeah. you're, you're involved in their like day-to-day setup. And then, you okay, do so how coaching, long? development, that kind of stuff. So are you still billing or not? Yeah, I do still build, yeah. You still build? Not very well, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll talk about that. <laughs> so, like, so okay, j- just to help me understand, then, so last three years you manag- you've been involved in management and you've managed, yeah. like, small teams. Yeah. So, basically, I'll give it a rundown. So, with Saul, you, go, you get promoted to a certain yeah. level and then you decide what route you want to go down. Do you want to be a manager or do you want to focus on being, like, a top biller? Yeah. So, they support you with whatever route Either you want to yeah. go down. And, and you for decided. me, it was like, I want it, you know, for me, I kind of... I d- done recruitment for eight years and I definitely get more fulfillment from like helping and developing people and them yeah. doing deals and me being involved in that side of things so it was just a sort of natural yeah. progression um, and then the reason why I'm a business development manager at the beginning of this year is you know I I'm again the kind of manager I am I'm not the kind of like you know 
have you done this? Have you done that? Like, I don't yeah. like that style. The way I like to manage people is through helping them with business development because I think that can be the really hardest part of the job. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, doing it in for a long time, I've got a lot of good relationships. So it just made sense naturally for me to pick up jobs and I give them to my team okay, and then nice. I help so you, them. So you feed your team and then... Yeah, okay, that's, that's exactly awesome. it. Okay, cool. So let's break that down then. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to talk about this BD piece. So let's, let's just, like, talk about the segment of your career where until you got up to like practice lead yeah. and that's where you decided if you're going to go down the management route yeah. or top biller route. Yeah. yeah. So before then, mm. what, how did you do billings wise? What was your, what's, my, what's been your best year? 270. 270. Okay. Decent. It's all right. Yeah, it's, it's not, not great. bad. And you've, right. so it sounds like, so, and that's always been tech sales. Yeah. That's all I've ever done. That's all you've so- ever done. Software sales. Yeah. Okay. Software sales. Right. And then how long, and then the UK US piece, mm-hmm. How, and then up until the practice leap piece, was it just UK? No, or so it? what happened is, obviously, so Salt has, uh, we actually have, I think, 10 offices now. Okay. But at the time, we didn't do anything. We, we've got an office in New York, right? We've got like 20 people in New York. Yeah. But I think about three years ago, um, we didn't have, the reason why we opened that office is you because doing we started doing deals yeah, in yeah. New York and we realized there was a massive... Um, opportunity, opportunity yeah. so naturally that's so how was you doing deals from the UK yeah. in New York okay, yeah perfect. so I was placing sales people we did a lot of work with some of the big consultancies out there so naturally there was loads of business we had consultants going out there all the time meeting clients and placing people so they were like yeah, uh, sense, we, need, yeah. we need to open office here there's a huge opportunity okay so I then was doing that um, and then from that I've just kind of on and off, always sort of place people there. Yeah, that makes but sense. then the P and Ls are different. Obviously, we can't yeah, have yeah, people yeah. doing whatever they want. Otherwise, it would just be all crazy. Chaos, yeah, so that's course. why they said, "Oh, you can still do a bit of US." All right, cool, cool. <laughs> all right, sweet. So, early on at Salt, then mm-hmm. you'd never done BD before. No. How the hell do you approach that? I think, for me personally. You know, I, I appreciate that I am slightly annoying and I use that to my advantage. What do you mean? In a, in, a, in a good way. So I think for me personally, it's all about putting your personality across. Yeah. And I think that's how I've managed to be successful in business development. And okay. that's how I teach people in my team to do business development is, you know, be, be, be Emma. Put yourself, you know, get them to know you because ultimately it's a very competitive environment. They're going to get like 50... Yeah. emails, calls, whatever it is a day, you need to somehow stand out from the crowd. So how can someone um, start getting their personality more? So that? for me personally, I personally think it's easy with sales. Like I, you know, I can't speak for marketing yeah, or yeah, tech. Sure, sure. I only know for sales and sales is a very candidate led market. Sure. So Mate, that's like low, most sectors. Is like that most sectors? Oh my God, really? No, 100%. I thought it was just us. No, but so if we get an absolute weapon of a candidate, you know, they've done X, Y, and Z, they've closed X, Y, and Z deal, F- automatically, you should be tapping up all those hiring managers yeah, of so their you're, competitors, so you're spe- specking, out. specking out. But I'm not talking. I, there's nothing worse than a recruit rec- recruiter that just does like a blind spec to like, hi, oh, I've got this candidate, blah blah blah. Yeah. I literally will meet someone. Sorry, I'm going to burp. No, no um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. I will meet someone sit down with them and say where do you want to work like this is about getting information from our candidates where do you want to work where's cool like tell me about the market you know they're the ones selling the product they're the ones working in the space and they would say oh well you know i've just won a deal against x y and z or those guys are doing something really cool with that kind of technology and i'd be like cool and then i'd go on linkedin and i would literally phone the hiring manager and Yes, you know, they get a lot of approaches, but if you generally have something to say, it's about believing in what you're doing. Mm. Phone up the hiring manager and be like, look, I have just met someone that you want to meet. You will want to meet this person because they are working at one of your competitors. They're their top sales guy. Go, do you want to go for a coffee with them? And for me, that's how like most of my relationships have started. Like some of my biggest accounts has come from me harassing, not harassing people, but in a, in a nice way. Uh, and they kind of know who you are, and also it's about you know there's don't don't do something if you've been told to do it and you don't believe in it. Like you have to do something that you think is worthwhile. And for me, it's about you know if you've got an amazing candidate and you do think they are amazing, then you shouldn't feel nervous to get in touch with that hiring manager that you know yeah. spoken to because you know what you're doing is good because it's going to like benefit them. What if you haven't got a candidate? What's your approach then? 
Or do you if, not have a if you have what? So you just have no? Then you no, you so must like, have some. Like you must. Do something. Nah. Well, you just said it's a candidate short market. So okay. Well, okay, Emma. So hundred percent. But so what if I can't so get okay, a candidate? So what would okay, you do if I okay, got a so then okay, f- you must have. It's like what came first, the chicken or egg? For me, then, and this is again another thing I say to people on my team is like, just be honest with them and say, look, I'm really new to the market. I know it probably it's probably di- more difficult now because it's like a lot more saturated. People probably can't be asked to spend their time with recruiters. But if you, you know, even if you speak to a candidate that you don't think is that good, not you know, we do think all candidates are good. I'm not still saying someone's that. Still, someone to talk about. Yeah, you can still talk to them and understand. It's about okay. market knowledge. Like for me, it's all about market intel. I, you know, I've got some clients on before from you know when you see articles about them receiving funding. I know this probably sounds so textbook, but it does actually work reaching out to those people and being like, oh my God, you've just got this. I saw you in this, it, blah, 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 blah. You know, I do, I write passels, which is like blogs yeah. about s- certain articles. I'll send it to hiring managers and be like, I just saw you posted uh, uh, about, about that. Well, guess what? I just wrote an article about it. Mm. It kind of just shows that you actually know what you're talking about. I, think I, there's like a lot I feel like what you're doing there is like you're, no, the, the reason why I ask you yeah. that is because like, <coughs> So what I just wanted to get your thoughts on was like, uh, and I, t- like, I agree, I had way more success Yeah. when obviously ultimately you have a reason to call them, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, you could sit there two hours in your BD power hour or whatever and have no reason to call them. Yeah. That's when it's really difficult and it's like, this is shit and it's horrible. But what you're saying is then, w- on that point is worth it's content or whatever, candidate, a not so good candidate, average, like you've got a reason to, I think to it's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely think you know, we can call up any company we want to and say, hey, can I recruit for you? They're going to be like, no. That's just not going to work. Like, why do they care? You know, at the end of the day, you've got to respect their time. They're busy people. I feel like if you go with them, and you you know, you don't even say, can I recruit for you? It's like, do you want to meet this person? Or do you want to do this? It's, It's a different conversation. And, you know, I, I'd find that awkward. I wouldn't call up someone and go, hi, I see that you're, All right. you know, can on the candidate side then, Mm. What, what, how, what, how did you, so obviously, as you said, you had um, a year where you, mm-hmm. you build nearly 300K. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's decent. Mm-hmm. So, like, obviously, I'm assuming that when you started Assault, you didn't have any clients mm-hmm. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You had access to a job yeah. board. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, how did you start building up the candidate So, I definitely then? think one thing that Salt does really well, and I think it's recommended, is pick a specialism. Like, niche. whatever it's going to be, pick a niche. Mm. Um, you know, make yourself really, really good at one thing. Because that, for me personally, is how people have become super successful. Mm. And it worked for me. Um, so what did you niche down on? So I, so I recruit in software sales, but specifically marketing technology. Oh, okay. So when I joined, there was, like, no marketing technology vendors. There was, like, email marketing or e-commerce platforms. Yeah. And I just networked with all of those senior people. And then now, honestly... How did you network with them? So how did you start that? How did I start? So I would, you know, t- try and be the, some of the directors. I'd also, like, you've got, like, it's a niche within a niche, right? So I'd get, like, a real junior salesperson, like, an inside salesperson that's, you know, not ready for a big closing role. But I'd take them to market in like a different way as well. So it's okay. just about, I think just anytime you find someone good, just d- utilizing them as much yeah, as like possible. Yeah, really maximize, yeah. Like it's so difficult to work a sales job and actually find people that are really well suited. It's better to go, right, I've got this amazing guy. What can I do with him? And actually, all women, and actually really understand it. And I think if you keep talking, to, uh, and if you are really specialist, you're going to keep knocking on the same doors. Eventually, they're going to want to have a conversation yeah, yeah, with totally, you. Totally. And I think that's what worked for me. Eventually, people would just come back to me and, you know, they would say yes or no, whatever. But they would know who I am and they'd know me. And then, you know, yes, they then would have a job and they go, well, who am I going to call? Like, I'm going to call Emma because she's been harassing me for the last six months in mm. a nice way. I mean, all, <laughs> all you're saying is, like, you stayed in touch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. actually, like, be front of mind if yeah. that's, like, okay... Okay, I know you're not. I know you're busy again, but let me call you back in. Two yeah, months, yeah, yeah. Two weeks. But I think it's again, it's about having the knowledge. Like, I don't want any. I, you know, recruiters do get a really bad rep, and it really irritates me. I have it at, like family barbecues where they're like, "Where you're a recruiter," <laughs> and it's like we're actually good at our job. Like, I know mm. a lot about my clients. I really invest myself in them, and you know what we're doing is putting really good people with really good companies there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as you know what you're talking about there's nothing worse than somebody yeah you know i wouldn't try and you know 
get in, get on board with like a tech company. I don't know anything about it, and I'd be the first person to be like, just because I know recruitment doesn't mean necessarily I'd be able to fill. So what, would any you role. would you say you're an expert? I'd in, definitely in your niche? say I'm an expert, hundred really? percent. Yeah. How? So in a nutshell, you obviously touched on it there, just out of interest. Mm. How d- how did you get to the expert status? Expert status. <laughs> like, but ah. do you know what I mean? Like some, someone listening, <laughs> yeah. like, you know what? I've done it for a year. I feel because you do you get more confident in that. But so like, yeah. so you said there that <coughs> like obviously niche down. Obviously you'd ha- be having conversations with these people mm-hmm. as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Like how did you approach like really getting under the bonnet of like your your? Um, did you do anything different besides like just having conversations with these people? Like what else did you just do? Just meeting people as much as possible. Go- okay. It's so cringe, but going to expos like it's not cringe. Like I know, and going but to net- it's yeah. it's honestly so so important. Like I one of my biggest clients. Um, Where'd they come from? They came from me trying to get in with the um, MD for like two years at his previous company. And they work with uh, another agency. I won't say who, in case you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) Joking. Um, And he was just like, sorry, it's above my head. I I can't work with you for two years, right? He got a job at this new company. He called me up out the blue and he just said, I want to work with you exclusively. Uh, I've got the freedom to do it and I did about you know it's one of our biggest accounts and has been for like the last three years cheers so you know and that was from me you know he knew who I was and he, I think it's about the most important thing is putting your personality across as well like I find so you know even when you know if we hire people at Saul if I've got people on my team that are coming across from other agencies and they're doing like an email and it's that typical you know, structured, like, email that, let's face it, pretty much every recruiter in London is sending. And for me, it's like, of course they're not going to respond to you. Like, why would they? What would you do then, mate? I just think you've got to, you've got to put your personality across in the way you write, you know, in the way you kind of write an email how you would talk. Okay. You know, say why someone's good, not in a bullet point format that you've just copied and pasted from their CV, but actually with <laughs> a bit of emotion. I definitely used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That. But with a bit of an emotion, with a bit of conviction, like at the end of the day, we're salespeople as well. We need to sell to them why they should speak to us. Mm. So I think it's really important to do that. Okay. Where, um, so what you're talking about there, great, great story. I absolutely love that. <laughs> I had the same experience, like, but it's a With bit, bullet a, bit points. a bit, bit, nah, not bullet <laughs> points, but it's slightly, it's slightly different experience. So, like, it started actually a, a bad experience. So, like, this client mm. is, yeah. So, like, I had this client who, like, I knew was like just he had a, this uh, insurance break had about four or five different jobs. Mm-hmm. There's loads of recru- recruitment agencies on it, and but they, I just knew they like um, charged less than we charged. Mm-hmm. And his mobile was on LinkedIn. Mm. He just put it on there, so he must get absolutely peppered. Anyway. Yeah. Gave him a call. Yeah. And he finally called me back. But, like, you know when someone calls back and then it's like, yes. you get it passed from a colleague. Oh, yeah. And, like, it was f- during a BD session and I didn't remember, like, I just, I just completely crumbled. Blank. I completely crumbled. I was like... Did you cry? He, no, I didn't no. cry, but I was <laughs> like... Because, like, he called back and then I was like... Someone said, it, like, I don't think they caught his name properly and I was like, who the fuck's that? Like, I don't know who mm. that is, sort of thing. Anyway, long story short, he called back, he got through to me and I was like... Like who? Why who did I call you, you again? Like who are you? Sort of thing. Like absolutely crumbled. Just looked like an absolute numpty. And then he's like, "This is the worst call ever." Like just don't call me again. Sort of thing. <laughs> Wait. So it doesn't have a happy ending. <laughs> no, it does have a happy oh, ending. Right. So that happened. Right. <laughs> but and then, like, I stayed persistent. Mm. Like three months, six months. I was like, "Look, I'm sorry. We got off on a bad foot. Totally. I'm my sorry. Mistake. I'm shit. Like yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm shit. Like I made a mistake. Da da da. Um, long story short, finally like broke the account. Yeah. And then like I made like four or five placements from like back to back. So I totally get that. I think people like vulnerability. That's what that says. Like mm. people like, like it I when was you happy are yourself. To admit, I was like, you know what, I fucked up, mate. Yeah. Like, that was yeah. Like I look like a numpty. Like, I think that's what makes you good. Like you know, I'm not talking. That's a personality. About, of, like, it's piece, about isn't yeah. It? It's about showing you that you're human. Like I've like read this thing. Re- like literally listened to a podcast this morning about it. About how people. You know, it's about having that human interaction interaction with people yeah, totally. and it's so important to show that you are a person yeah. and that you're not just you know no wonder recruiters get a bit of a bad rep when you're being told or you are specking out people to like 50 hiring managers and you've got this guy or whatever 
you know, they get so many of those emails. Like, you know, when you've got friends that go internal and they show you the emails and yeah. you're like, no wonder people think yeah, we are shit. Bad, like, because yeah. some of us are shit. And but I think it's just about being better. What you were just saying there, though, in that story, which is what I wanted you to talk a bit about, is like, that you ha- ha- had to remain persistent. Mm. Yeah. And like that, I mean, that's hard. Yeah. So like, how have you cultivated, like resilience basically like how have you gone about that i don't know like obviously really? crying a lot no i'm joking <laughs> um i don't know really like i think i've been really lucky to work in a business that is very very supportive okay. i've never feared for my job if things haven't gone my way that helps. and it's ne- <laughs> yeah and it's not been i've not always done really well like some months you're blank you know you might even blank for two months and mm. it's the worst feeling when you're trying so hard yeah. Like, everyone knows the phrase is, you know, recruitment is champagne and, or razor blades. Yeah. Right? You know that phrase. Yeah, you're good as yeah. your last month. No, but like, you're either literally celebrating or you want to kill yourself. Yeah. yeah. And it's so Recruitment roller coaster, mate. <laughs> exactly. Is it, mate? <laughs> Plug. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, but how, how have you, do you do anything to help you get through to that? To be honest, have you done anything I think, in your journey, I, I'm, like you know, I'm, twen- I'm 28 now, 30 next year. Woohoo. Um, Wait, you're 28. It doesn't yeah. mean you're 30 next year. Yeah, it does. 29 what? December. Oh, okay. 30 next year so I think it's like an age thing Um, I think it's about seeing the bigger picture like it is honestly again really cringy to say but I just actually love doing recruitment I love recruitment so I'm not I think sometimes it's difficult to motivate people if maybe you know people come into recruitment they want to leave after six months a year they want to go into sales or do whatever you can't make people want to stay and do it but if you do want to stay and do it I think that end goal kind of keeps you in it because there are going to be good times there are going to be bad times like you know James my old manager he's in New York now he used to say like you need to be as emotionless as possible like you need to take out emotion from the situations because you shouldn't really necessarily celebrate when things are going really well and you shouldn't really hate it when things are going badly you've just got to kind of remain one level of calmness um, have you managed that then? Have you done it? Like, I'm do terrible doing at doing that. Really? <laughs> no, I'm much better now. I think in about the last two years, probably. So maybe since I turned 26, I think. Mate, you're talking about age way too much, mate. No, no, I do. I'm just trying. It's like the timeline in my head. <laughs> um, I think for the last two years, I've like stabled out. Like before that, what have you done differently? What have you done differently then? Just, I think you've got to look after your own mental health. Like Talk you've got to make it a priority. That's what I thought you might you've say. Got, you've got to make mental health a priority. You've got to, you know, everyone in recruitment likes to drink, but realistically, don't go out in the week and drink because it's just not going to help you do yeah, your job chaos, probably in the mate. next day. Like, trust me. Um, mate, there's no way. I, I honestly, I don't think I actually. I d- I'm pretty sure I didn't do like a day of like recruitment hungover. Like I didn't. I Whatever. didn't. Wo- I didn't work in London. Oh. So, like, I, w- I worked in Harris Heath and, like, it's just, like, farmland, basically. Oh, nice. That's probably the dream. Nah. It was all right. It'd be nice but and like, peaceful. Honestly, like, I had, to, I had to, like, drive an hour to work. Oh, wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, they, so like I couldn't think of anything worse than doing recruitment hungover. Yeah. But it, having to I, deal I, with I people. I don't like know how I did you. Like, I look back at myself and I'm like, I think that's just being young and yeah, in yeah, London. Fairs. I think most young people yeah, in London yeah, no, are totally, like that. Totally it's probably that. just not So what did you start doing then? Dif- like, st- how did you start looking after your mental health? Or anything that you start to do differently? So always make sure you go to the gym. Always make sure that you get sleep. Mm. Sleep, yeah, gym, big. don't drink. Mm. Um, in the week. Sh- in the week um <laughs> uh try and plan things like it, you know it's kind of like a you know, sort of grandma thing to say but like get into a routine yeah, yeah and stick to the routine um and just prioritize what you do yourself like sort of really good like i've got a life coach oh wow um how's that helped you it's just really she's like amazing because it, i think everything all sort of links together if you're happy in outside of work definitely happy inside of work you're going to be happy you're going to be successful you're going to be calm and peaceful C- costly. of course costly. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you had the life coach for i think about two months now it's quite a new thing oh nice mm, yeah so they do it at so i think like management or that's just wicked so, yeah. like, so basically, what you're saying is in the last two years, you've got much better at I think it's a maturity thing as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, like, ultimately, what you're saying there, you just got better at having a bit of perspective in those moments and, yeah. like, not letting someone else's emotion. Do you know what emotion. it is? Like, my sister works in, like, mental health. Okay. And she honestly has to deal with some of the most 
horrible circumstances yeah. like in her day to day job and she was actually one of the people that put it into perspective because I had a person that cancelled an interview like a final interview and it meant I wouldn't have got my bonus and uh, we get like a five grand bonus four yeah. and a half grand and it meant I missed my bonus and I literally like lost my shit I was yeah. so annoyed she came home from work and like was telling me this story about you know whatever happened in this mental ward won't go into details yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's literally paid like absolutely pittance and I just really got some perspective about, like, yeah. Emma, stop moaning about things. Yeah, so true. It's just so silly. If someone cancels an interview, th- just rearrange it or find another candidate. Like, we're not, we're not doctors here. We're not saving lives. I think it's about having perspective on what we do and going, do you know what? Do the best job that you can do, but also don't take it home with you and don't let it, like, rattle you and keep yeah, you up yeah, at night, yeah. even though, you know, I'm not going to say it, it doesn't. Does. Yeah, it no, definitely so no, does. That, no, honestly, like, <laughs> yeah. perspective's big. Yeah. Like, meditation, how with that? Oh, like, yeah, meditation's really good. Have you, uh, do you, do you meditate? I do meditate, really? but not that often. I, I try to, like, meditate more. Fair, isn't that, that just helped me be able to, like, take a step back in yeah. those moments, because I struggled with that early on. I was like, man, why is it? Why would this guy let me down? Like, I know. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like why it, it, are you such a? Why are you so horrible? <laughs> <laughs> why, why? So, um, okay. So, how come you? How come you pick the management route then? What did you always want to know? You want to do that, or I don't know. Like, I think for me, um, I like coaching people. I really like seeing people do well because of stuff that I've like specifically done to help them. Yeah. Um, and it just gives me more fulfillment. Like. I'm not money motivated. I like was money. Though? Huh? Was you, I? You must have been. I, I was to like some degree, yeah. but then I think it comes a point where, you know, you can earn loads of money, but you're not feeling fulfilled in what you're doing in yeah, day to day. Sure. You can just keep placing people and like, woohoo, like ring the bell, but so it's not that exciting. Do you remember getting your biggest ever paycheck? Yeah. Uh, how did, how yeah. did you do? Well, I was going to say I get a lot of big paychecks. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't so remember them all. Cream. No, I'm joking. No, I'll tell like, you what I do, do you remember. Re- I remember getting my first bonus. Okay. That was that was actually more of a defining moment for me. I got my first bonus, so I got my first big paycheck. And uh yeah, I went and bought a Prada handbag. Oh my god. I, I know how cliche, right? I think I must have been about twenty three years old. So the reason why I asked you that is like how did you feel? Oh my god, I felt so happy. Really? I felt like I'd made it in life. Really? Yeah. So I felt the opposite. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Just cause it's because of your point when you said there, like you said, you were just mm. saying then, like yeah, you can get this money, but if you don't feel fulfilled, yeah. and I just said, like I was, so I looked at my bank account, and I was like, I don't feel anything. Mm. Like obviously I, I was happy. And sometimes like, I fe- I've definitely lost a lot of perspective on money, and my dad would say that, like I have no perspective on money because the amount of money that we earn for doing not like obviously we do a lot, but you know I think you kind of think you know it is a lot of money and we are really really fortunate situations to yeah. be in to work in this career because it's obviously extremely lucrative but how have you got better at managing your money then mate because that's definitely like that's uh, that's an interesting thing isn't it yeah, so, like, yeah. as you said yeah it's actually come up i think once or twice before it's like 23 year old recruiter mm. earning like, six figures whatever yeah, yeah who the fuck's telling that person like oh, no. not to go out and just I spend know, those I money know. on Prada <laughs> handbags <laughs> no, no, no. do you know what i mean I know, like no, no. How have you got better at that? Again, obviously... Do you know what? I think I just had to grow up. Like, I've got a mortgage. I've got a cat. You know, he's not (laughs) going to feed himself. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And I've got a boyfriend. He's not going to feed himself. Okay, so with that in mind then, would you do anything different? Like, like, what would your advice be to that 23-year-old self? Um, Do you know what? You know, I'm a person that says don't have regrets. I don't know if I necessarily... Uh, you know, I think you need to go through things yeah, to yeah, appreciate. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't necessarily be, uh, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't say, like, do not categorically do that, but, like, out of interest, mm. like, do you think you'd sort of give that person any advice? But no, because you know what? It was fun. Like, yeah, I had fair. a laugh. Like, I look back and I'm like, do you know what? I went on amazing trips. Like, I did so much fun stuff. I had such a fun life. Yeah, yeah. And now, you know, I'm kind of at the age where I'm like, do you know what? I've done all that. It's like given me really good experiences, and now I'm just, you know, I want to, you know, be priorities a little bit changed. more. Yeah, priorities have changed. I think that's just about growing up. Yeah. And I wouldn't say necessarily, you know, maybe don't do that or don't do that because then what? Like, Fair enough. you're just gonna have a bore. Like, I think those are kind of what your twenties are for. I just, yeah. you know, your, your early twenties are for just like doing what you want to do. Yeah, and also just like learning who you are as a person. I think yeah, that's, that's like really that's important. Big. Yeah, no, I, f- I was just interested because, as I said, like. Yeah, I mean, it's when you're earning that type of cash and it's mm. like, well, okay, well, no one's told me how to manage my money before. Yeah. And like, do you know what I mean? 
you could make some bad mistakes oh, no. with money. I oh, know, yeah. So, um, <coughs> so how did you transition to into management then? Like, did you like mentor people for a bit? So it's like a, I went, I went to like a what we call what we call a practice lead, which is essentially like a team lead role. Okay. Um, and was that just managing one person? Or no, I think it was managing three. And do you? So you went from not managing anyone? Well, no, actually. So like they do it kind of gradually. So if you start saying you want to go down management route, you know that you might get a resourcer. So I think I originally started with one one girl, um, and she was like my resourcer. Um, just sort of coaching her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing her, like, setting her up in the mornings, like, what she's going to do, what she's sure, going to sure, focus sure. on. And then just gradually we get, like, bigger and bigger and then you get promoted to, yeah. that, to that role. Okay. Some learnings that you've experienced in your management career, mate. Ooh. Talk to me. Like, was you a good manager from quite early on you know or did what? you have to... I think, okay, so I think... I, w I, I don't... I, I think it's about being... Don't... Don't be a manager that someone else is, don't, don't try and manage in the way that someone else tells you to manage. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like there's not a cookie cut away to management. Yeah. That's my opinion. If you've got certain personality traits, you should kind of go with your gut instinct and go, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that rather than try and, you know, if your manager manages you in a certain way, it doesn't mean that necessarily you're going to be like that. Mm. I don't know if I'm making any yeah, sense no, that here. Does make sense, yeah. But so for me, I think with me, I tried a lot to do things like, okay, well, I've got to do this because... Someone's told me to someone's do it. Yeah. Someone's instead, to do instead it. of trying to do it in your own, uh, yeah, not but I think in your own way and not listen. But also, but like you've got you've got to do that. But I think it's, 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 it's it takes time to have confidence in your own voice and actually yeah. say, well, this is how I think. I'm going to go with my gut feeling here. I think mm. it's about kind of trusting yourself more. So that would be one thing is kind of trusting yourself to make a make a good decision. Mm. Um, Did you have anyone sort of um, that you was learning from or like? Yeah, so my manager was Gareth, who's okay. still here. He's like an amazing, amazing manager here. Um, and he's got a different team now. Yeah. So he was sort of like coaching me. But me and him, like personality wise, are like chalk and cheese. Totally We're so different. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is an amazing manager. And it was just like, you know, it, we are just sort of different in terms of like... Yeah, how you might deliver how, it. How you might like deliver stuff. So uh, that's what, what I think... What were some of the core things that really helped you with then? Did you like have like some really good processes or um, did you... Yeah, so he... Yeah, so well, we have... I'm just trying to think back now. So... We, what, just in terms of like... Just like, so, so something that, to help you out, so something that's come up quite a lot mm. is... Um, where what is this for people who want to move into management? So it might be someone that is in management right now, mm. might be struggling or yeah. thinking about managing or whatever, um, where you've obviously in, obviously you'll be managing now for like three years. You might have like mm. some things that you've just done for a while now, yeah, which yeah. you know just set you up the best way to yeah, yeah. manage your people. So a real common thing... Um, is quite a few people said that when they said when they said to their team like right so if unless it's like life or death you can grab me and, and like speak to me oh my god no or basically I trust you like between 12 and 1 like that's when you can book in time with me and, and speak to me or whatever yeah so I look, okay I think again so everyone's different yeah. so, so I'm not going to say how I am like is my way is the right way yeah, of course. but for me I just think you need to be there for your team like a million zillion percent like okay. I'm very much I'm not a micromanager like I don't give a shit about you know how many CV sends you've sent how many you know what you've done I don't even really look at that kind of stuff for me it's all about are you doing the best work you can do? And also, like, trying to coach people through making the best decisions. Like, if I hear someone on the phone or if I can see something, they're doing something, I'll be like, oh, my God, let me help you with this. Let me do yeah. this. Like, I'll go on the phone, you listen in, that kind of thing. Um, and I think you've just always got to be as, like, I, I would never say, oh, don't talk to me between these hours. Like, they can talk to me whenever they want. Mm. At the end of the day... I kind of, I think in, as a recruitment manager, you do kind of have to be a bit of like a counsellor at the same time as well. Yeah. Like the amount of times I've cried to my former managers, like they probably should have charged me for like therapy services. But <laughs> I think you've got to be that person. Like you, you know, recruitment is hard. It's so up and down. Ultimately, some things we do are completely out of our control. And as like someone new, it can be so disheartening. Like I've yeah. got a girl on my team at the moment. She's absolutely amazing. She's been with us for about three months and she's had the shittiest couple of weeks, like through no fault of her own. And, you know, that for me as a manager is difficult to see because she's working really, really hard. So yeah. it's like just trying to support her and be like, do you know what? This will happen for you. Like you're doing everything right. Like this will all make sense. Just keep doing the right things. Yeah, just filling them with confidence. Yeah. yeah that's what my manager did to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
How did this American piece come about then? Like, what, did it happen quite naturally with your desk that you ended up so making I think some placements in America? So a lot of the companies we work for, so we work with a lot of SaaS businesses that are either US companies coming mm. over to Europe yeah. or European SaaS businesses. And naturally they would be like, that do you have people in, America, in the US? Yeah. So a lot of the clients I used to work for were already US companies. Um, I think I had a client that basically was a UK-based company and they said, oh, do you have anyone in New York? Because we're going to expand to New York. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. And that's basically how it came oh, about. Like, yeah, 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 I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, I'll give it a go. Nice. Um, and then how have, you how have you found... So I've had a couple of people now that um, built their American part of their desk mm. like a year, maybe a year and a half before they went over or sometimes mm. shorter um, and went over there. Typically, people have said that um, people were way more receptive to pick up the yeah, phone. Yeah, hundred percent. Really? Mm. Like, how? What's been your experience, obviously, from like, working in the UK? I market? think I, not even the UK, but so we like cover the whole of Europe. So okay. I think each different country has their own sort of traits. Like Germany is so hard, in my opinion. Like really? no one wants to talk to you. They're all very loyal to their employers. Um, the US is just really like. People don't have this in, in sales. I'm talking specifically. I yeah, don't, again, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, about other fine, markets, fine, but um, like, no, we don't have the same perception. Like here, it's like, well, then they need to have stayed three years, three years, three years. In the US, it's like they don't care about that. They are literally just chasing for the best opportunity. So they yeah. have they pick up the phone even if they've been at a company for a week. And hiring managers aren't the same. They don't say, well, this person has to be there three years, three years, three years, because no one has been. So they're just way more open to a conversation. Even if they're not interested, they'll recommend people. Like, I just feel like they're just... A, I think recruitment's a lot more respected in the US yeah, than yeah. it is people in the UK. That, yeah, yeah. How has that helped? It just helps a lot because you can have conversations with people. I think that's half the battle. Like, yeah. we're all trying to speak to people. You can't really convince them to go to an interview if you can't even speak to them. And, you know, I think that's the beauty of when you work at the US market. They will pick up the phone to you and have a chat with you. That's a conversation, mm. yeah. Um, can you make more money in America? Are the um, fees bigger? Yeah. Everyone, everyone's saying the fees are bigger. I, I, uh, do you know what? I've done like a mixture. So I've done a mixture of UK and US. But like, you know, I think it was like last year, I had to do like a few highs in the US and I did like three of them. And then they all started like the next month and it was absolutely sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but that wouldn't really happen in the UK but because but it's the, just so much harder. So no, but the term, the like terms, everyone's saying like, yeah, America's 30% easy. I mean, I don't know. I Maybe they're just really good recruiters. I personally haven't worked at 30%. What, what's the I'll highest? I work at like 20 to 25. Really? Yeah. Just basically the same as the UK. But Fair then I know that there I'm are... Just saying, cause like, our American team, like the guys in the US do amazingly. Like they're really, really good recruiters. Really? So... Yeah. No, I'm just interested because, like, I'm sure you've seen it all over mm. LinkedIn. Like, America, like, you can, yeah, earn loads of fees. But you can, but it's all, like, you know, it's really, it's expensive to live in America as well. Like, the cost mm. of living in New York is really super high. So, you know, I personally think it's all relative. Have you spent, how much time have you spent in New York? Quite a lot of time. Like, what's I'd, it like? If someone's thinking about moving to New York to recruit, what the hell should they be thinking about? So, like, actually, um, I had a guy. Mm. I don't know if you ever met him. Again, we don't have to go into all the details. Do you know Tom Cotterell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I live. So to give you context, I live with Tom. Oh He's actually God. been on the podcast. Oh shit. <laughs> but anyway, I don't anyway, think he likes us. Anyway, yeah, fair. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, in a nutshell, don't have to go into all the personal details. Mm. But like, when, when he we, didn't like it, did he? Yeah. So that's what I mean. So like, obviously, but to be fair, like everyone can be attracted, like you said, attracted to London. Mm. And I definitely was. But I've never been to New York. I'm definitely going. New York's like, amazing. What like, if I, if I didn't about? have a cat and a boyfriend, like, I would move to New York. Really? Um, I think it's like, yeah, like it's, it, it's just got an amazing, you, just I love the aura of New York when you go there. It's really? just like, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great thing. But I also think it can be quite a lonely place. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, like I think it is quite a lonely place. Like me personally, I need my personal space. Yeah. Like, I've lived alone for a very long time. I would never ever want a house share with anybody. That yeah. is like my idea of hell. So, um, you know, if so I was to move there, I wouldn't possibly be able, I don't think I'd be able to, unless I lived in like Brooklyn or something, afford my own place. You'd probably have to like share with someone. Yeah, so no, I just wouldn't like, like that. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah. want to do it for that reason. But, like. but, like, if I, but like just from your experience being there and stuff like that, mm. like if I'm a recruiter right now, mm. I've got three, four years experience and someone's hitting me up and go, look, yeah. there's an opportunity at Salt, New York, 
I would say what do the, it. What, but, like, what, oh yeah, but what should I actually think about? Because like the the retro actually tell me that you can earn thirty percent fees yeah. and all this, and not actually talk to me about the actual reality to, of I, living there. I don't know like the ins and outs of things, but you definitely need to c- take into consideration living costs. You definitely need to take into consideration the different taxes. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I think it's like forty percent or something okay. in New York. I don't know. How, don't hold me to that. I might be making that up. No idea. Um, Okay. And just, yeah, I mean, I, I think go for it. Like, if you're in that position and you want to do something, I think New York's an amazing place. I would definitely say yeah. do it. No, I'm just interested because I, I did a um, podcast with someone that also went to New York and, and he just found that, like, <coughs> obviously but people typically in New York, they're, like, set up there. They've got their friendship groups and stuff mm. like that. So it can actually be... Quite, yeah. it can be quite a bit of a challenge. We've they? relocated a lot of people really like, to New York. But then and you have like your tribe at work. Tom, they've all said <laughs> quite well. But like, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think obviously if you're going to a business where there's like eight, 20, 30, oh, whatever, yeah. they're, they're your fucking people. And like, that's, yeah. that's obviously really useful. Yeah. But no, look, I totally get that. Like hundred percent. So when I moved up to London, it was just me and my mate. And I've said it a few times. Like, it's just obviously a weird feeling when you're surrounded by people every mm. day, commuting to work, but then you get home and you just feel like it's just you. Like, yeah. it's weird, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. let alone obviously in New York where yeah. it's even more busier if you're yeah. surrounded by all these I people. I think if you're going to move anywhere, you've got to throw yourself into it. So, like, yeah, you like, can't you've just got to rely on your work friends. There. You've got yeah. to go to, like, fucking to, yoga I classes. I couldn't agree you've more. got to do this, you've got to do that. Yeah, you've like, you can't just sit there and be like, oh, like, I'm lonely. Like, it's, it takes action, yeah. unfortunately. Like, you've got to put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, mate. So, as we finish, mate. Are we finishing already? Oh, it's gone quite quick, Oh, my God. Time flies I've when you're like doing the So um, <laughs> what I was going to say, what I'd love to get your thoughts on before we finish, mm-hmm. two things. So we, obviously we spoke quite a bit about business development early on and throughout. Like now you're managing people and like obviously you have a focus on BD. Mm-hmm. Like what, what are like the common mistakes that you see people do or like common things that you see people make that sort of ha- you, you see th- that prevents them from having more success at BD and stuff like that? S- Typically. Okay, so number one is stand out from the crowd. Do yeah. not do what all your colleagues are doing. Like, if you're going to send someone an email, make it about you. Don't be don't be scared to like let your personality shine through okay. in an email. Don't you know do the standard thing. Actually, show who you are. Get them to know like the real person. That's super important. Have you ever tried video? No. Okay. I fair. feel it's like that's the ball like. Really? No? no, but as in like, but you're just out of interest. Just oh, because like send them a video and be like, hello. Well, like obviously oh. you've seen the people like interview Audrey or oh, this. Yeah, so like yeah. you can send a video and emails like, because yeah. I've done that and it works 100%. Oh. So I'm just interested. Okay. But Maybe it does. I've never, I've okay, never so used Okay, so be it. actually like, don't just do the put bullet points. Put your personality across. Put, try and put it, your you know, I think across. it's the same with LinkedIn, right? If you look at the people on my teams like LinkedIn, we, any post that we do, it's like, put you across like if you're recruiting for a company put it in your day-to-day life talk about how it affects you like stand out don't just be the same so be willing to put yourself across yeah okay nice secondly is don't just try one avenue like oh i've emailed them like who cares you've emailed them have you added them on linkedin you know we send these email projects now and it's like oh they've not replied to me yeah have you actually added them because then you can like see when they're online you can like send them a little message them You know, so like, don't don't get complacent with. Oh, nah, I've done that. It's, I've tried it's like, it, yeah. do you know what? What's that like story when it's like, if you can't go round it, go under it. Whatever <laughs> it is, you know what I'm talking about. I know about. what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, if you can't get hold of someone from one way, like, try the other Be way. Persistent. Try the other way. Keep going. Ultimately, you should make a list of top ten accounts that you are like. Those are the accounts that I'm going to break, no matter what happens. Those are the accounts I'm going to work with. And you should put them on a pedestal. And you should do everything you can to get into those accounts. And if you're good enough and you know what you're talking about. Like, why wouldn't they want to work with you? Okay. Unless they're working with Salt already, then they definitely won't. Really? Really joking. So is that, so is that <laughs> your key thing then? Get, get your personality across. Yeah. That's email, web touch persistent. points. Be persistent. And, and, you know, do other ways. Don't just do what everyone else is so doing. Talk to me about your ways, mate. Come on. What, so, so, like, what's like, so if I've mapped out 10 accounts... I go to the top straight away. So go to, like, C-level. Go to CEO. You know, if you, you know, you're looking to, like, get into a software business, go straight to the top message them then go down a level then go down a level like add people never add hr <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> love hr <laughs> uh, okay wait, wait, wait. <laughs> just quickly so all right no, so, but I'm, like, wait, wait, wait. I, so i'm mapped out my 10 accounts yeah i'm gonna go straight at the top yeah what am i doing to try and get how am i do, trying so to speak i'm to very open about so if you go on my linkedin like i say the companies we work with talk about relevant stuff to them if they're a you know, email marketing platform, say, these are all the other email marketing platforms that I recruit for. These are all the roles I've placed. 
are you interested to talk to me? Like, it's all about relevance, yeah. okay. okay? They get a lot of emails, so from different recruiters. We're not calling them at this stage. Just straight I, email. I, I would just do an email. And I, do you know what I think? And I know there's like so much thing about, oh, cold calling is not dead. Cold calling is dead. I don't know if it's dead or not. I'm not here to judge. But for me personally, I wouldn't want to do a cold call. Like, I would email them, add them on LinkedIn, and kind of go down that approach. You know, if I really wanted to get into them after doing it a few times, like I literally will keep sending messages, not like hello, hello, like shit messages, but try and make it, you know, you don't want to keep annoying someone. Then maybe you could call them because you could be like, look, points, I've yeah. called you. I'm really yeah, sorry yeah, to yeah, do fairs. this. I think calling someone like, you know, we, we've all been cold called by a rec to rex at our desk and it's like, grim. they feel awkward calling you. You can tell they're nervous. It's actually so you grim. Don't wanna, you don't want to take the call. You're like, why, the, why are you calling me? And that's the same thing for people that we're calling as well. Like, yeah. I don't know. But there are probably a lot of recruiters out there that do cold call and they like stand by it. So I Fair. think it's just whatever works but for you. But start at the top. Yeah. Then work your way down. Mm -hmm. And why did you do that? Just because obviously, the, the better if you have someone bought in at the top, then they have more decisions. Yeah, exactly. And I think you should be able to do. Yeah, like you should go to the top of their business. They're the ones that are going to know the. They're the ones that have got okay. more power. All right. And then one of actually just on the BD topic, mm. you do events. Yeah, I do. I'm doing an event next week. How plug? How long? How long have you done events for? This is actually my first event. Okay. Sort, sort of done events for like years. But this is my fir personal first event. Why? Why did you decide to start an event? Because, do, do you know what it was? I think it's just one of those things, you know, when you do like a little business plan every quarter and you say what you want to do, what you want to achieve. I've been saying for so long, I want to do an event, I want to do an event. And it's just like, do you know what? Just fucking do it. Do it like yeah. actually just do it. And it was a good time because it's coming to the end of the year. We've got a few different events going on at the same time. And I just said, look, I want to get this done. I want to do it. And yeah, so... I was, so, so the reason why I was curious about that is because um, uh, I had so I did a podcast with a, a chap called Kyle who um, he again he's like all about smashing the phones and all that mm. and still very much believes that. However, like he was really struggling to get through the switchboard, all mm. the normal stuff, right? And then he decided to start an event series, and all yeah. of a sudden he had these sea level, high level people going, "Yeah, yeah. I'll take your call. Yeah. I'll speak to you about an event because you're not yeah. talking about jobs yeah, and about yeah, the course, like, again yeah. standing out." Yeah, yeah. So have have you found that if you went or um, not, or did you rely on your existing network to to try and get people to get involved? Um, well, I I've actually got people on the like uh, the people on the panel are people that we recruit for, of but then also I had I did contact people that I don't recruit for that I just because it's about women in sales how yeah. there's like a lack of diversity sure. so I just reached out to some women that I knew who I had never recruited for but I like really rated them yeah. so uh, whether they're, they're not on the panel but they came back to me and it was like a good way to have a conversation perfect so, no, that's yeah. what I was trying yeah, to allude to because like. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah, again, it's yeah. like different. But I think they respect you in a different way. Like, I, I, it does really kind of grind my gears how recruiters do have a really bad rep. And it's like, we're not bad. Like, we're smart people. We know what we're talking about. And I think when you do an event or if you do like a blog, you're actually showcasing that you do know what you're talking about and you're not just like some yeah, guy, some, some London, like, I don't know what the word is. Like, Buying, wide like, Prada boy. handbags and that. Yeah, like, fucking <laughs> shitty Prada handbags. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, how how do you think um, you mentioned it a few times? Like, how do you think this uh, rep of ha, ha, no, how <laughs> how do you think this rep of recruitment can change, mate? We're impacting just it right just, now, mate. Just just do a good job. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Like it, that is what it comes down to. Do the right thing. If you get a job and you can't find anyone, tell the client that you can't find anyone and say, yeah. do you know what? I know that, you know, Tom down the road recruits for that area. Why don't you contact yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've actually had recommendations from other recruiters. I've been past candidates from other recruiters. We do that too. It's like, I can't place you, but speak to that Just person. Be real, yeah. Like, go back to people, you know, give them feedback. Yeah. And it's that, you know, I think if everyone starts doing that, at the end of the day, the good ones probably do that anyway, and that's why they're good, and that's why they're always going to have candidates and clients that are going to use them. For the rest of you fuckers... <laughs> get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I totally get it. I think, I don't know. I think there's 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 so many good recruiters out there. Mm. there there's so many good recruiters out there. Um, so look, as we finish, mate. Mm. Before I do ask you the uh, final question, mm. 
what you're excited about? Obviously, your event. I think this is going to go out before the event happens, like after really? the event happens, mate. Oh yeah, right. just so you know. Damn. Well, but I anyway, obviously, excited God, about that the event. event. went well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how amazing that <laughs> event was. But what are you excited about, mate? What's going on in uh, your world? Um, I'm going to Thailand in December for a month. Oh, wow. So I'm going off grid, guys. I'm doing that oh, for the where first are you time. Going? Not Thailand. Oh. I'm going, uh, I'm traveling Morocco with the missus oh, for three weeks. Nice. But it's the first time I'm doing that as well. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I'm really excited. Like, so I when you say off the grid, what are we talking? Well, I'm like, are you like putting you out of office on the whole time? I'm never going to go gonna like in? off grid. Like, I'm the kind of person that will obviously, you know, my clients, you know, if they're going to rest with me. But I think it's a good time to do it because Christmas, realistically, <laughs> I no, agree more, no yeah. one cares anyway. Yeah. I think it but was is just it the first time you're doing it. You've never done that. No, before? No, I've never done it before. I've yeah, never nice. like gone away for like a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I'm really, ex- mm, I'm really interested I'm to like see how it goes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Anything else? You recruiting for your team? <sighs> I no? am recruiting for my team. <laughs> if anybody's interested in joining <laughs> Salt, uh, we love Salt.com. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, mate. But a few things going on. Event. Yeah. Thailand for a month in December. Mm-hmm. Nice, mate. That's pretty much. You've been it. on uh, an interesting journey, mate. Thanks. Last question. Oh. If you could uh, communicate to every single recruiter out there, they'd take on your advice, they'd listen, mm. they'd implement it tomorrow. could be a phrase, a sentence. What would uh, Emma say to them, mate? Mm. That's such a good question. Mm. Um, what comes to mind? I think it's, you know, we've already touched on it, but I do think it c- comes down to, actually, I was going to say do the right thing, but actually I'm going to say Go on. strive for the best. Strive for the best. Like, if someone says to you, if you've got a job... And they want somebody from like a competitor, like get someone from their competitor. Like don't send them free CVs from free people that aren't their competitors. Like wait yeah. until you've got the best and do what you can to get the best. Like yeah. always strive for the best in everything you're doing. Love that. Mm. Boom. Boom. Thank you, mate. Enjoyed that. Thanks. <laughs>